Hey guys, I'm going to show you how I make a brisket during the week and I don't lose any sleep or any time from work. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Todd and like I said, I'm going to show you how I make a brisket during the week and I'm not going to lose any sleep. I'm not going to get all drunk, wait until the end of the cook and I'm gonna be able to go to work, come back refreshed, and have a beautiful brisket dinner. How am I gonna do that, you say? Well, guess what? There's more to a pellet grill than just yard art and something you plug in and it puffs smoke. You know, they really do have a purpose, and that is set it and forget it. We all know it. Those of us that don't have pellet grills, you know who you are, you're jealous, you're just gonna have to get over it. So hey, before we get started, if you're new here, my name is Todd, this is Greenhorn Barbecue and Beer. Welcome to the channel, appreciate you guys showing up. Now, by the way, if you guys uh, like my shirt, don't get jealous, um, I got stickers too. And if you follow the link down in the description to my Teespring page, you can get your own. Sorry, you'll have to wait on the hats, I haven't figured that one out yet. Okay, how am I gonna do it, you ask? I'm glad you asked. So obviously, I'm gonna have to save some time somewhere, so, you know, I came home from work today and I'm gonna wait until just before I have to get ready for bed and I'm gonna go ahead and pull the brisket out and I'm gonna trim it up. Now I'm not gonna do just any kind of trim, I'm gonna do just a greenhorn backyard trim. So this is in the video about how to trim your brisket, but let's go ahead and get started. All right guys, one more thing. If you could take a minute, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell to make sure you don't miss a thing and be sure to look for us on different social media platforms. The latest one, I'm up on MeWe, go check it out. Uh, one thing that caught my eye while I was in Walmart was this uh, pretty nice fat cap, you know. Um, you know, I'm gonna end up trimming some of this off. There's one little spot here where it looked like the butcher got a little overzealous, I'm really not sure why. Uh, and if you turn it over, um, not bad. I mean, for a choice, it, it really isn't bad, you know. It's it's a nice looking um, brisket, so um, let me go ahead and get started. Some of this kosher, coarse ground salt. And I'm just gonna kind of gently just put a little bit of that salt on there. This might be a little bit easier. Now, as you guys may know, uh, dry brining really makes a difference. Uh, my last brisket just had so much better flavor and it really helps, especially with those uh, those choice pieces that just don't have the marbling like a prime does. Um, this, this part of California, it's kind of hard to get prime. Uh, you know, I don't like mail order meat. Uh, maybe one of these days. Um, so pat it in, just kind of move it around a little bit. Um, and hit the other side. Okay guys, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on my little rack here. Uh, now, I've got a little bit of room problem here, but I'm gonna take some of this plastic, make sure I don't uh, contaminate anything that might be in here. And that'll do just fine. All right. All right guys, that's it. That's all I'm gonna do tonight, because it's, it's uh, getting late, gotta get ready for bedtime and the brisket's now resting nicely in the fridge where it's gonna dry brine overnight. You're gonna see a difference in the color for sure. It's gonna pull out those juices from inside, bring them up to the surface, and really kind of 
prime that brisket for the uh, smoker. It's going to be great. All right, guys, it's the next morning. I got to put my barbecue hat on here and then get off to work. So um, what I didn't capture last night was I took some of this Cosmos injection mix and I mix it up <clears throat> per the instructions and let it set overnight in the refrigerator so all the solids would settle down. I'm gonna do a light injection this morning. And once I'm done with the injection, of course, good old Uncle Steve's shake for the uh, final rub before I put it on the trigger. So let's get started. So after a night of dry brining, this is about uh, 10 hours worth of time in the fridge. You can see how different the color is. The grain is going this way. So this is gonna be easy to remember when we carve it later on. We go against the grain, of course the point. So like I mentioned with the injection, get yourself a nice stainless steel injector uh, syringe. I'm gonna concentrate on the flat here because it probably is more, well, definitely is more lean and the point doesn't need as much help, but you see how the grains go. So I'm gonna inject across the grain so that as I'm coming in and out, gets between all these connective tissues. If you go lengthwise, it may not get the coverage you need. You guys can see it kind of bubbled up a little bit. That's good. Uh, that's kind of what you want to see. Uh, you're definitely going to add to the, the mass and the weight of this thing. Um, it's going to be messy. It's probably not a good idea to do this before you're going to work. That's for sure because it's splattered and stuff. So um, I probably should have a, uh, a bib or something. Um, anyway, so let's get moving here. Okay, as you can see here, we're going to go with the back side here. I'm gonna be using this Uncle Steve's Shake Competition Cow Powder, and uh, I'm just gonna generously apply a very nice coat here on the back. There you go, see that? That's what you wanna see. Don't worry about the mess here, you know, when you're late for work, you gotta do what you gotta do. All right. Okay, don't forget the edges. Now, something about uh, rubbing, you know, you guys know this, it's not a rub, it's more of a pat. <laughs> We're not gonna name it a pat, but you know, you anyway, get the idea. Okay, now, this is the fat side. Again, I'm gonna be cooking fat side up uh, today, maybe point toward the right. And uh, if you end up getting a bald spot, that's okay. Keep a little extra shake on hand. You could always just rub it down and cover up that bald spot. Let's go. All right, guys, now I'm going to get outside and start the Traeger up. Okay, guys, here we go. We got the smoke tube here. Now, what the smoke tube is going to do is just make up for the uh, fact that this model in your Traeger just doesn't do as good of a job getting that smoke delivery. So they call this the uh, California crutch. There you go. I'm going to turn on that smoke. Go to the smoke setting. Once I can see that smoke come out of here, you guys know how to do this. I'm gonna to set it to my uh, favorite temperature today. It's gonna to be 225. Okay guys, here we go. Got the uh, ambient temperature probe because I'm gonna be using my fireboard and my regular probe to monitor this while I'm at work. And I got the smoke tube over here to the side. So here's the flat, flat side down, point side up. Cap side, cap, I'm sorry. Cap, fat cap side up. Going over that way. I don't want that smoke tube touching the uh, probe or the meat, but that looks good right about there. And there we go. Now I'm gonna take the probe 
and I'm just going to bury it into a really thick, meaty part of the brisket here. Right about there. All right. That looks pretty good. What do you think? Okay, guys, now it's time to take the barbecue hat off. I'm going to head off to work, but with that fireboard, I'm going to be able to monitor temperatures while I'm at work. And since Sassy, my beautiful wife, works from home, I'll be able to have her make any adjustments or changes and even wrap it if it needs to come to that before I have a chance to get home. So I'll see you guys after the stall. Hello. Hey baby, how you doing? Good, how are you? Yeah baby, I'm, I'm just at work and I'm wondering if you could do me a favor and go check on the uh, brisket and Traeger. Okay. Can you go check the brisket and check the bark, give it a scratch test and see if you can spritz it? I'll be right there. Okay, I'm here at the smoker. I turned on your camera like you said. So what do you want me to do? Okay, can you look at the bark? And make sure that the bark doesn't flake off when you touch it. No, it's it's on there. I right, can you give it a spritz. Oh. Uh, just give it a nice coating of spritz, you know, maybe about uh, 10 seconds worth, nice and even. And um, make sure you don't squirt it too hard. Okay. Trusted me with the brisket, eh? Oh. You don't want to wash off anything. That's oh. Ho, 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 ho. Okay, I think that's good. I it okay, looks honey. juicy to me. So Okay, and then close her up. Okay, close her up. All right, honey. That's it? Thanks, baby. Hey, I love you. Hey, I'm I'm working really hard, okay? So I should be home around 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock? Are you leaving me in charge of the brisket? Well, yeah, baby. You know, I'm, I'm working hard here. You know, I got a lot of stuff to do today. Shoot, I could do this. All right, sounds good. Okay, baby, see you later. Okay, bye, babe. Okay, so he's leaving me in charge of the brisket. I'll do my best. So this brisket comes out killer. It's because I was tending it. Okay, see you later. Hi, honey. Hey, baby. How's it going? Okay. What's going on? Hey, baby. I'm still really busy at work here, and uh, it's time to wrap the brisket. Can you help me out and go wrap the brisket for me? You're really busy right now, huh, at work? Hey, of course I'm working really hard, baby. You, you know me. Uh, I'm always uh, burning the midnight oil during the day. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm swamped. Oh, really? Uh-huh. For real? Yeah. You're busted. Because I just got a call from Michelle. She told me she saw you in your garage. <laughs> I love you. I love you. Goodbye. <laughs> okay, guys. It's time to wrap. That thing has got some beautiful bark. It's been on there nearly 10 hours. Maybe, well, maybe closer to 11 hours. Average temperatures right around 245. And depending on where I probe it, it's anywhere from 165 to 180 degrees right now. So let's get off and wrap it up. All right. Now, I'm choosing to use foil because I wanted to finish it off faster. Okay, I just got home from work not too long ago, and I really want to uh, keep it juicy but cook it faster. I'm going to add a little bit more of that apple cider spritz. Okay, again, I'm going, I'm going for juicy and I want it to cook fast, okay? So there's nothing wrong with being able to do that here. And wrap. Nice and tight. Be careful about puncturing any holes. And then right back onto the smoker. Okay, I'm being careful to keep it same fat side up. I got the point over here. I got the flat over here. Nice and tight, I got no holes. And uh, now I am cooking for texture. So I'm gonna take out the main probe, 
because I don't need it anymore. Now I'm just going to close it on up. I'm still going to be monitoring the ambient. Even though the Traeger has a temperature gauge, I'm going to always trust it with this. Uh, it's a much higher quality machine. Plus, I can go anywhere in the house. I can even go to work like you saw today and monitor it. So now I am going to up the temperature to 275 and uh, let's uh, finish this sucker off before it gets too dark. All right, guys, simple as that. So like I mentioned, I'm going to go probe tenderness now. I want to cook it up to the consistency where when I probe it with that thermal pro, it feels like cold peanut butter. I hope to get there around 206 degrees. You know, if it goes a little bit over, that's okay. If I get there sooner, that's okay too. I don't think I will because it's a choice piece of meat. So I'm totally expecting to get up to about 206. Probably going to be a couple another hours. But I upped the temperature to 300 on the Traeger, which means I'll probably have an average of about 320. So we're going to watch it here. Quick shout out here to Uncle Steve's Shake. Uh, without Uncle Steve's Shake, I probably couldn't cook as much uh, brisket as I have been lately. Um, if you don't got any, get you some. It's really good stuff. I'll leave a link down in the description. And if you guys are jealous about this cool looking shirt and hat and stickers that I have, I also got a link down to our Teespring store in the description. Go get you some of those too. All right guys, after an all day cook with a little help of Sassy here while I was busy at work, you know, bringing home the bacon, um, we, wrapped the um, we wrapped the brisket in foil. I've never wrapped brisket in foil. I heard it's really cool. So um, honestly, it's uh, it promotes more uh, juiciness, I think, you know, but we're gonna try it out here. Uh, really, what I know it does is it speeds up the process a little bit um, at the sacrifice of the bark. You know, I'm not so big on the bark. You know, it's a weekday brisket. You got to cook it fast. Sometimes, you know, hey, you got a hungry uh, family to feed and, and, and that's okay. <laughs> so, so what we're going to do is we're going to pull it out right now. Yeah, hit me, him and me and me and him. <laughs> and, and the dogs. So anyway, we're going to pull it out right now and show you. So... Let's get started. Here is the brisket. Okay, still in the foil that we finished it up in. Uh, so I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna break it in. You know, um, I don't need the foil anymore. I'm just gonna throw it out of the way. So. Okay. Now, I've always heard the foil doesn't help with the uh, bark. Look at that. Looks to me like it's a pretty good bark here. Not bad here. Now let's see if it, uh, you know, they say if it, you slap it and it twerks, it's done. Is that a twerk? Maybe was this a twerk? Oh, like, there we go. Oh, oh, is that a twerk? Oh, yeah. That's a twerk. Look at that right there. That's a twerk. That's like a sexy blood crack. This was the fat side right here. Here was the, uh, here was the point. Okay. Flat, really thin part of the flat was right here, and um, this is the part that sat on the grates all day. Okay, now the grain kind of uh, let's see, I didn't score it, but the grain's going that way. Okay, so the grain's going that way. So first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to split it down the middle, right here. Go. Okay. Nice. Okay. Not bad, huh? And that's just the uh, that's just the flat right there. There's a lot of juice here because it's got, you know, I didn't trim too much of this fat off. Okay. That's money right there. That's money, baby. Let's baby. Let me see So I'm gonna push the flat off to the side. Now remember, we injected this. God, that's juicy. And uh, some of the staining here could be from the injection. And uh, that's okay. So, I'm gonna turn the point here. Now, I'm gonna turn 90 degrees. Cut it down the middle. There we go. I'm gonna show you what's inside. Right here, that's the money shot right there, baby. Oh wow, that's gorgeous, honey. That is juicy. Okay. All right, guys, there you go. Hey, this is a really good weeknight brisket. This is gonna have us in 
leftover briskets for the next week. Through the weekend for sure, we're gonna have brisket salad, brisket sandwiches. Brisket mac and cheese, brisket this, brisket, brisket that. Brisket, brisket dog food. No, so, we can't get that to the dogs, it's too rich. So anyway guys, wanna do a hats off again, Uncle Steve's Shake. This stuff's good, go get you some. Also guys, if you like uh, barbecue shirts, Check out this shirt I got here. I also got some stickers. Go check out my Teespring store. It's in the description, the links. And uh, folks, hey, have a great week, and we'll see you next time.